Greetings Commandos, this is Pagan Horde and I would like to do another mech bay talk. Uh, this time I like to cover a build that I have done uh, for the last several times for every season, multiplayer season of the last few years I have used it extensively, this exact build, to win quite a lot of battles. So I'd like to cover both uh, Gauss and a thing called the Mechanical Jam Jet. Mechanical jump jet is the thing that saved my ass so many times. So let's talk about it. And to do that, we're going to use the monster called the Godzilla. Why this one? Well, because this one you can stack the plus one accuracy bonus of the quirk of this guy. And you can stack it with Gauss Sniper, which is plus three accuracy with Gauss Rifle. So you start the build right away with plus 4 accuracy to Gauss. And you can improve that further with pilot affinity you get with the Godzilla. Let's start by removing his typical build. And let's talk mechanical jump jets. Now why do I love these things so much? The reason is mechanical jump jets, depending on the size of it, is going to add a flat jump capacity to the mech you install it in. They come with a bit of caveat though, is that it will weigh exactly 10, uh, pardon me, 20% of the mech's weight. So if you want to install it on a, on a um, 100 tonner, this means it will weigh 20 tons, which is a lot. The other caveat is you, if you read the text here, is that you get minus 25% damage to attack made after jumping. This means that if you jump then attack, you get minus 25% damage. It also means you don't have any uh, death from above accuracy, but that's fine. We, that's not the point of this build. There's one more thing that is doesn't tell you right here, is that the mechanical jump jets cannot move in on the, in the air so if you jump forward you're going to be facing exactly the same way as you land when you land you cannot uh, rotate a bit in the air like traditional jump jets which means you have to be careful how and where you jump because you you can you will uh, you will arrive exactly uh, as you started so it's a you can get yourself in a bad situation if you jump forward and show your back to the enemy, for example, because you cannot rotate in the air. However, having said all that, why I love it so much? Well, you can grab this 100 tonner boy and I'll say jump 10 capacity. So this it does extreme movement. And as well, because it's a mechanical jump jet system, you do not add heat for jumping. It is a zero heat for per jump. So you can afford essentially to jump all the time, especially when you pair it with Gauss weapon who have very little heat. You now have, well, a Godzilla body. There we go. So it is heavy, however. That is always the problem. So what do we do? Well, we're going to use a small engine core. This guy already comes with a 200. Let's go full armor, though. This guy only comes with a 200, so it is fine. One thing I do recommend, when you go to a uh, lower engine that requires external heatsink, this is where this is where the compact heatsink becomes actually the best one that you can use on a Mac. Now the compact heatsink, if I can find it. There's a lot of things over here because I'm looking in the wrong place. Exactly. Now the thing with the compact heatsink is that they they weigh more than regular heatsink. So almost in every mech, it is not a good thing to use because they're the heatsink themselves are heavier. However, when you use external heatsink that must be used to make the engine function, they do not count toward the weight of the mech. So let's change it for that. For example, the compact heatsink is minus 
six heat per turn, but they weigh three tons. However, since it is for the engine, yoinks, they do not count toward the weight. So, I, there you go. You have minus, three, uh, minus six heat per turn for one slot only. And you have, and it didn't, do not count toward the weight. So it's not, doesn't count as six ton, it counts as nothing. So, what do we do with this monster now, next? Well, let's give him defense. With the enhanced imaging, uh, let's uh, assume you have a pilot that can use enhanced imaging. And the gyro defense, you're gonna and the ten movement point of jumping, you're gonna have a lot of evasion. You're gonna be hard to hit. And one weapon system that I love to use with this guy is, of course, a lot of choice. And you have some uh, brand new stuff uh, in this game that are kind of insane. Like the science light ultra ghost rifles are incredibly good. But you cannot use heavy stuff because the heavy stuff uh, depends on your uh, evasion and the knockback is just no. No. But you can use a double AG 40 build. Uh oh. Trying to see where I'm going with this, eh? Huh? That, that makes this boy a monster. Double Ag 40 is insane damage and is very accurate against VTOLs. So I would use this guy extensively because of the extreme maneuverability and the, uh, the ex extreme accuracy. You have plus 3 accuracy against VTOLs with this guy. With VTOLs are really a problem right now in my current playthrough. That will stack with the plus 3 accuracy here, the plus 1 accuracy here. The end accuracy, and of course, of course, we're going to add noise for further accuracy. So plus one there, plus one for the arm, we're at plus two. Let's say we're firing on VTOL, so we're now at plus five. We're now at plus eight with the Gauss sniper, and we're now at plus nine accuracy with Gauss rifle uh Plus nine, and on top of that, I'm fairly sure that the uh, the Godzilla has a pilot affinity that will add more accuracy. So it's going to be in the ten category. So there you go. You, you ha this is the monster that won me quite a lot of multiplayer online stuff. I would use this guy extensively, uh, because both for his accuracy and VTOLs, and because of his extreme mobility. I very useful in every map. And when you're doing when you're attacking planets that have high percentage, more often than not the mission was a uh, orbital strike where you were facing a ridiculous amount of enemies and you had to move fast. So these guys, these jumpers with the mechanical jump system, they were my go-to. The only drawback is that the mechanical jump system is very rare, especially the good ones like the 10. And any damage to your legs will probably break the system. So you have... Those are monsters and they are very high evasion and hard to hit. But you do have to be careful with them. You do. Because you, if you lose the mechanical jump system, trust me, you're going to curse a lot. You are going to curse a lot. So let's just finish this build here with some doubles let's just give it a wee bit of armor for the uh, additional weight these guys don't explode so you don't care about uh, anything else like let's just give him from ferrofibrous to for the weight and there we go this Godzilla here has won me this build right there has won me quite a lot of online matches so i i uh really uh, support this build uh, a lot and i advise anyone to get some mechanical jump jets they are however fairly rare so what i will do next is show you the the mech that comes equipped with these 
and the one that you want to salvage. But like I said, any critical damage to the legs will most likely break this mechanical system. So once you, if you find that mech, you have to absolutely headshot it or overheat it and not destroy the leg. So I'll see you guys in a second. So I just realized I didn't put any uh, optics on the uh, the annihilator, but I'm sure you get it. Put some optics MK3 on it to make it better. But there he is, the Fafnir S7, Solaris 7 Fafnir. This is the guy who comes with mechanical jump jet 10. And it is the only one that does. So if you see this guy in any one of your playthrough, do your best not to break his legs so that you can salvage the jump jet or try and build one of them yourself. Let's take a look at him. So, if we look at him as he is now, that's really deadly. Twin LBX-20 cannon and this guy has a quirk of ballistic accuracy so you can make a build with this guy similar with what we've just done with the Godzilla using uh, auto cannons instead and that would be just fine he is this is a dangerous build as is with these mechanical jump jet now he went all the way down to a one engine 100 so this guy is barely gonna move one or two square yeah you move one and you jump ten gyro compact there you go so he went for full compact so he can fit in two lbx10 and that is quite the monster i mean we can take this guy as is because the accuracy there do stack with uh the accuracy bonus of ac do stack with racks and i've made build with this guy uh, back in the day with Rack 10, but Rack 10 is no longer viable because of uh, knockback. But you can make a double Rack 5 build out of this easily with the mechanical jump jet system and do another monster this way. I mean, you have plenty of room for ammo. I would perhaps use... Uh, the FC to MK2, which is my personal favorite. And I would perhaps add some uh, ballistic to add more accuracy. Or you could go do the F, the fire control system ballistic and forego the uh, battle computers completely and you would be fine as well. Like uh, improve ballistic here, ballistic accuracy. accuracy. And uh, you would, this would stack with this, and you you would be fine as well. But if we continue down the uh, fire control system like this, uh, let's add some gunnery, for shit and giggles, and the jam one, so that you don't jam often. And there we go. This is quite the monster. We even have room. If let's just do the ammo right away, so. We're not, we don't wait too long. What is that? Mass driver. That's some super heavy shit. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Now you need a specialty rack ammo for the special risk ammo. So you have to watch out for this. Probably gonna need at least three doubles three doubles we're at 150 yeah that's more than enough 150 that's more than 10 alpha strike you can even put uh, one two doubles and one normal now we at 120 that's 10 alpha strike of uh, times six that'll be enough and uh, now your heat efficiency is <laughs> through the roof and you still have 10 tons, so what do you do with that? Well, well, in my playthrough, I found a light PP, a light AC20 like this. 
that I found really interesting. Because it's only 8 tons. I mean, a regular AC20, uh, a regular one like this, is 14 tons for 100 damage. But this little guy, light AC20, he does the exact same damage for 8 tons. Not enough free space. Okay, well, let's just put uh, more ammo here. Yoinks. <laughs> uh, you see where I'm going with this? So you uh, you jump close enough, and you use the light AC-20 first. So you punch a 100 damage hole, and then you fire uh, <laughs> both of these. And laugh, in that order. So we're going to give you AC ammo AC-20. A caseless one, like this, so you have 10 shots as well. Now you have 10 shots of boats. And you still have room to maybe do some... Uh, some, 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 some... Let's put the AR-12. Points. No, not enough room. We have a sensor tracker instead, which is... Good... But um, we might jump into close range with this guy. So we're going to go AR-12 route. Or not. Okay, but we are going to add... Then a Guardian ECM. Why can't I, not, I use Guardian ECM? That's a good question. I am not sure. I don't have any ECM active on this guy right now. That's interesting. Hmm. Huh. That's me scratching my beard right now. I do not have an answer for that at the moment. If we say probe, are you gonna be difficult with that as well? Active probe? No. I am confused. Because it's already here. I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. Okay, so let's just pretend I was not an idiot for a second. And uh, let's good give you some, uh, some, some, some AMS. You have a laser AMS clan. Uh, where do I have a support spot? It's here. So let's put you here and you here. Let's improve the cockpit. Small cockpits, I'm not a fan of this. I'm gonna give you a rangefinder for uh, better view and more gunnery. So what do we do for that? Mm, that would be nice, wouldn't it? We're going to do a range one, so that uh, your range bracket for your guns will be farther ahead. So there you go, this guy, this is a true uh, endgame monster. You'll be able to jump 10 ahead and fire all of these. You will get the minus 25 after jumping. So one thing I suggest for every mechanical jump jet pilot is to have the... Um, the pilot quirk when you can fire and then move so that will uh oh ballistic range pardon me plus 20 ballistic range there you go so i absolutely suggest to have all of those pilots pilot uh, using the me mechanical jump jets to be able to fire then move you so you will completely negate the um the minus five percent damage after jumping so this is another example of a end game monster and this is why I absolutely adore the mechanical jump jet system. You can take a 100-tonner and give it 
a ridiculous amount of mobility and carry more than enough firepower. Of course, there's plenty more the, the different version of the jump jets, which is this one. There's one through ten. And every one of them is simply the make a number of jump jump capacity. So if you install a jump jet five, you will get five jump capacity. And it does less, for example, uh, less damage after uh, jumping. And there's plenty of builds that can be done with lower jump jet system that to just give mobility to a mech. Of course, this is the uh, extreme version with the best jump uh, possible. And I have used these guys extensively. Typically, uh, by the end game mode, I had four or five of jumpers like this, four or five bunnies, and they were my go-to for any type of uh, mission that required any type of movement. So there you go, guys. That's what I wanted to talk to you about the mechanical jump jet system. So it is a rare item that is hard to get. You can get them on the FAF S7. So if you see one of these guys, don't destroy its leg. You want that. All right, that's all I wanted to talk to you about the mechanical jump jet system. If you have any other suggestions of things to talk about, uh, these uh, I tend to talk about builds that I've done in the past that I hope still works. But if you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comment, and I will see you next time.